was first introduced to the Bob by Coach Stokes, and immediately when I got mine, uh, I tried it right off the bat thinking it was gonna be something really difficult. As soon as I started doing it, it started coming, and then you just find yourself in a zone. You're just you're messing with it, messing with it, messing with it, and then you're going up with it, up with it, then same hand, same hand, same hand. So it's not just you're, you're, you're working it, it's working you as well. So it's like, it, it's, it's good in every way. It's such a, a cheap investment to, to better your game. It's an essential tool that, that's become part of my, my warm-up regimen. I love the thing. If you're interested in bettering your game in any type of way, buy the Bob. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Coach Stokes coming to you again from the Ring to the Concrete Stokes House Boxing Academy Online. Um, following up with another, another Dynamic Duels interview with two people this week um, coming out of Jacksonville, Florida. That is Willie Weaver Jr. and Willie Weaver Ice Trey III. Hello, hello. Who am I speaking with? Trey. Man, this is Ice uh, Trey himself. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's up, baby? This is uh, this is Coach Stokes, man. Uh, coming live from our podcast, from the ring to the concrete. How you doing, brother? Doing good. Is your dad right there? Yes, sir. How's it going, Coach? Hey, what's going on, big dog? Hey, I just want to tell you, uh, thank you for. Um, you know, uh, giving my podcast a little bit of your time, man, so we can go ahead and get you, you guys' story out there um, to the world, man, because I really feel like it's, a, it's it's something that people need to hear about. I feel uh, great when I talk to you, and I know that you guys are on your way, man. So I just want to thank you for allowing us to, to, to bring your story out there to more people. Well, it's a pleasure to us, and we appreciate what you're doing. Not a problem, not a problem. Well, you know what? Um, we live right now, so uh, Coach, why don't you just uh, let people know, man, um, straight off the rip, man, how did you get started into boxing? How did you know, uh, you know, how did you come to boxing? Well, um, I've always been a boxing enthusiast. I've watched boxing my entire life, but I never actually boxed myself. I was um, a wrestler okay. in high school. Um, um, from um, what I remember, we didn't have any boxing gyms in the little city where I'm from. Um, all been to Georgia. Um, so it was never actually introduced to me, um, but I probably would have done it. Um, so <clears throat> my interest into the actual training aspect of it, you know, started with my son, which was um, a little under two years ago. Um, we started out at the Jacksonville Police Athletic League. Um, of course, there were several other bosses there. Um, didn't seem that Trey was really progressing as much because he wasn't given the time that I thought he needed. Um, and so I kind of, you know, took it on and, you know, and um, began training him. And that's, that's kind of how it all started. Okay, okay. So, um, I, you know, and, and I see that as a blessing because, you know, uh, when a lot of uh, uh, kids don't get, get, uh, get get what they need per se when it comes to any of the sport not just boxing and we all know boxing is a single man sport so you get in there it's, it's one of those uh sports that you always hear about you don't play boxing you get in there you have to be serious about it um that, that that's that's you're absolutely correct you know um i think for me you know um you know i've always been a competitor and you know i guess i kind of passed that on to my son he did several sports prior to that. He tried baseball. He did football. Um, and um, he did karate. You know, and he did pretty, did pretty well at all of those sports. And um, during that time, I, I kind of worked a lot. I was in school. I was in law school at the time. So I couldn't really dedicate myself, you know, uh, to helping him, you know, to exceed the standard in those sports. You know, but mm. um, once we started boxing, I obviously, I, you know, began to work for myself. And so I had more time, you know, to actually dedicate to it or whatever. And um, so once we kind of started to do it, you know, and I had the other trainers, you know, working with him, I think it was his first bar match. And I, I tell you, he got slaughtered by this other kid. <laughs> <laughs> and, and me being a competitor and him being a competitor, he was upset afterwards. Um, but he never said, Dad, you know what, I don't want to do this again. He said, Dad, I need to train harder. And 
because if I want to get better, I want to beat him to beat him. Wow. I couldn't guarantee him that it happened to the trainer to begin because the trainer had too much going on with other boxers. You know, so I said, okay, son, daddy got you. So I began to, you know, really put together a trainer regimen that was very similar to um, the type of training I did when I wrestled. Um, I thought that, you know, strength and conditioning would be the most important aspect, you know, um, going into the game of boxing, you know, um, before we actually got to the techniques and all of that. So we started with just strength and conditioning and began to implement different techniques, boxing techniques into it. I got ideas from other um, trainers. Um, I, I got help from YouTube, you know, right. from old fights and, all, and so on and so forth or whatever. We were able to put together a good little plan. And we've been following it ever since. You you know you know what you know what? I'm I'm glad you said that because um <clears throat> to all my listeners out there I I you know I I'm a trainer as well so I have um I have people that come up to me all the time coaches like you know you know how do I get my son attention span to uh to to to, to stay with me or you know how do I do this how do I do that um and 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 the first thing I just heard you know from everything that you said first thing that stuck in my mind was you had passion. Being that you, this is something right. that your son wanted to do, um, you guys did it together. Your passion, so that you can go out there and make things better for him, is what made it happen. And 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 that's something that I definitely would tell people, you know, when it comes to that. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm seeing because you know it, it was it was it was a blessing that that happened when it happened, man. Because you know what, a blessing. Uh, when I say that, you know. That happened to him as well when he when he when you say he got slaughtered in there because you know he could have been like you know what forget this I don't ever want to do this again but you know that showed me that you know he is a fighter you know what forget this I don't like where it made me feel I'm coming back and when I come back I'm gonna come back even harder. That's right. That's Good. right. And um, and so and I saw something in him you know that day mm-hmm. um, and just like you said it could have went either way at that point you know and honestly this is a father son moment you know just to see his reaction after that, you know, and, you know, and for him to walk up to me and say that, I want to get better. You know, I want to go back. I want to train hard, whatever I got to do to get better. And that's what I want to do. Yes, sir. You know, and I, it, I, I was, a, I was excited about it. It let me know that my little boy was becoming a man, you know, and um, so that it had to do what he, he needed to do. And, and about a part, a part of this sport too is, especially when you're like me, a novice as a trainer is that you have to be very humble. You know, sometimes you you encounter people who have boxed before and they have all of this experience and everything else, and maybe they don't have the time to give you a – maybe they do. But if you don't humble yourself, a lot of times you can miss out on opportunity to really learn new things because nobody knows everything. And right. I, knew, I knew, you know, for sure that I did. <clears throat> and so, you know, I was kind of open to listening to the advice of other individuals. He was open to it, and even to this day. You know, my son can leap out of the ring. And to me, I'm like, he did really well. And the coach is coming to me and like, hey, you know, he can kind of brush up on this a little bit. I don't know this guy. You know, I don't know who this person is, but he saw something. And I'm a very humble person. Right. I say, well, hey, show him what he needs to do. You know, and we've gotten a lot of better just by being humble, you know, and being open to different advice. And so I, I would say to all your listeners out there, people who are, you know, wanting to get into this, who have kids who want to buy and maybe they're novices like me, is that to be open to ideas and listen to other trainers. Get everything you can and just kind of put it together and make it work for you and your team. Also, you know, I just want to go ahead and tell those 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 coaches that's out there, that's been out there for years, listen to what this man is saying. You don't have to be a novice. You don't have to be doing it for you know a couple years or, or, or 30 or 40, 50 years. We are in a sport where you never stop learning. So mm-hmm. one thing I was always taught was, you know, uh, stay humble and hungry. So uh, that's for anybody that's been in the game, that, you know, that long, man. Stay humble. You know, you don't have to walk, you know, excuse my language. You don't have to be a, a idiot or an asshole, excuse my language. You know, any and everybody right. can learn. You have, and you have trainers out there that feel like, you know what, they are uh, the God's gift to this, to, to this earth. And, you know, you can't tell me anything like that. And, you know, it's, it's like the old saying, you know, when you stop being green, when you stop being green, what happens? You die. You don't grow anymore. So, hey. That's right. You know. Well, hey, well, coach, coach. Let me ask you this: um, for my viewers and everybody, you know, especially the 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 the, the dads out there like yourself that's on the grind, how do you keep you know uh, Trey? How do you keep him focused when it comes to training, man? Well, I would say this: um, 
you know, for me, I think the first thing you have to do is you have to create a plan, uh -huh. a plan of action. And you have to ensure that when you create this plan that you can work with your, your son. And with me, I'm just kind of doing it myself. It's just me and him. We train at home on the screen porch in our backyard. Mm -hmm. And um, so the first thing I did was I created a plan. And this plan included everything I thought he would need. You know, and, of course, I began to build on this as we, you know, continued in the sport. But, you know, uh, I will put him on. He will work out six days a week and watch film on Sunday. During the week, he would do three three days of leg work for strength, and, for strength, and he would do three days of upper body for strength. Mm. Every single day, he would do 24 rounds on a heavy bag. He would do 10 rounds on a speed bag. And, he, and every single day, he would do six rounds on jump rope. You know, and that's kind of how we started with just that. Since then, we've implemented other things, um, such as the, um, what we just recently got, um, a week ago, which is the, um, the ball on the band, which has <laughs> helped us out a lot, um, wow. with, um, with footwork and accuracy because Trey had a really hard time with accuracy. So we did a lot of work on the, uh, double end bag, um, to kind of help with accuracy. And now we're doing a lot of work with the, uh, ball on the band. They help with accuracy. But the, the most important thing is to create a plan. And now once we, I, I implemented this plan for the first three months, I was there with him every second, you know, ensuring that he did everything right. Now, when he comes home from school, he knows exactly what he's supposed to do. And he will automatically go and do it. He goes from, like, right now he comes from wrestling practice. He comes home and he, and he starts his regimen because it's laid out for him Monday through Sunday. You know, and so just having a plan and making sure they understand it and that even when you're not there, if you're a working father like me, you know, um, then he knows what to do. And um, obviously your son, is, you know, your kids are going to have to be dedicated to it, but they're going to have to be passionate about it. But I think that if they're not dedicated and passionate about boxing, they probably won't be doing it in the first place. So they're probably going to want to do it and stick to it even when you're not there. So. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I get that from from other fathers as yourself that's in the game saying, you know, boxing is, is, is this unique um sport where it's not it's not a team effort. It's not, it's not an effort where, you know, you can you can depend on somebody else. It's just like hey, yeah, I think it was an easy um transition when it came from uh wrestling for him because wrestling you out there on the mat by yourself. You can practice right. you can train with the team, but when you get out there, it's just you and your opponent, you know? So, I mean, if you don't go ahead and, and practice what you what you were doing when it came to, you know, uh, wrestling practice or on the mat, you know, you, you're going to get wiped up. You're going to lose. That's going to be all on you, and the same with boxing. So, I, I you know, I feel he – it was the easy um, – it was easy when it came to to to, to doing that. Um, I, I love what you said. I love everything that you said when it came to you know, you know he had a tread, uh, you know he has a regiment, he has a training regiment, and I think you know fathers have to have that call action when it comes to it. It, it, it has to be something. And being that you you know you're military minded yourself, you're a vet as well. You have to have that structure because this is one sport that you you had you you have to have structure you know for it. any type of combat sports you know. Absolutely. Or you'll have a really bad day at your next competition. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Really that's, bad. What we, that's what we want to avoid, you know, um, because actually, you know, training and everything that we do, the workouts we do is really all safety, you know, and that's the way I look at it. Everything with boxing is, is, is safety first. That's so right. if you don't properly prepare your boxers, you can actually get them hurt in that ring. And, 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 you know, for father sons, you know, obviously we always have our kids first injuries at heart and we don't want to see them get hurt. Right. You know, so if you don't want, if you don't want that to happen, you got to make sure you have that structure, uh, that they're following that they're doing what they need to do and that you're there with them, um, uh, 100% of the way. That's right. That's right. Let me, um, let me ask you this. Um, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you nurture your father and son relationship? When, 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 when you're not in gym, you know, like, uh, you guys, do you do things opposite, you know, outside of the gym when, when, when you're not, when you, when you're not going to wrestling practice or boxing practice? I mean, what is it that you do differently? Um, I would think that I probably do the same thing that most good fathers do. And, um, and that's just, you know, spending quality time uh, with my son. I have two sons. Trey is my oldest. Okay. Um, he's, I think there's a seven year gap in between him and, um, a youngest son, mm -hmm. or whatever. So, so Trey is basically my little, my little guy, my little man, you know. Um, and so we kind of do a lot together, you know. Um, you know, we go 
outside. We got a basketball goal outside. We put the basketball. We play cards. We joke around a lot. You know, we, I mean, we do a lot of things. We do pretty much everything, you know. So I think just with that, just with the fact that we're so close um, um, and the fact that he's so disciplined with the things that I've asked him to do because I've been there, you know, for him from the beginning is that it just makes it that much easier for him to listen to me when it comes to training and what he needs to do when he gets in the ring. You know what I mean? We yes. have that rapport. He trusts me. There's loyalty there. You know, so, um, you know, I, I think overall, um, just with everything that we do, the quality of time we spend together and the fact that he, he knows that I have his best interest at heart, that it makes it, um, it makes for a great relationship Got in you. and out of the ring. Got you. Got you. He uh, is, uh, is uh, Ice Trey right there next to you? Yeah, he's right here. Ice Trey. Yes, sir. What's up, big dog, man? Hey, hey, uh, it's it amazes me because, uh, Coach, I, I I talk to all of these um young men, but then when you see them on social media, when you see them on the internet, you know, Instagram and the videos you guys post up, we're just seeing them fight. You know, it's like, man, these are these are boxing prodigies. These are kids that's out there where. You know, they love what they do, man. They doing what they love. But then when you talk to him on the phone, it's like, man, gosh, he's a little, <laughs> he's a kid. I mean, you, you think like he's a grown man. But, um, yeah. hey, Trey, man, I'm a fan of yours, man. I really am a fan of yours. And thank you for, you know, allowing us to speak to you today, bro. Uh, I know thank you. Gonna, you. I know, you're welcome. I know you're going to do big, big and great things, you know, uh, as you get on. So I just want to ask you this. Uh, when it comes to training uh, that you have to do. Um, for training, I I really just love boxing and training. Doing it is very well. Hold on, let's stop. The weights, the weights is the best part of training because the weights it gets me strong. Mm -hmm. Um, um, it helps. Yeah, when I get the weights, I can help to get my speed better because I will punch with the weights. Um, it helps me punch harder as you see in some of my fights. I can, I can hit my opponents and they'll, I can't. Okay. Um, but yeah, the waist is, the waist is, it's my best part of training. And then with the ball and the band that I just got recently, about a week ago, I really like using that because of my speed and it helps my agility and my footwork, which, which I really need to help on. So I use that in my training. And then what I really like out of the top thing would be the heavy bag. Because the heavy bag, I'll come home after wrestling practice, and I'll put 24 rounds in, and my stamina is is, is, is out of the roof. Hey. So as for my fights, I can punch the whole round and without getting tired. Young brother, we, uh, you ain't even have to, you didn't even have to say out of the roof because I was about to piggyback off that when you said you come from wrestling practice and then you come home you do twenty four rounds on the heavy bag that is a killer you know you a monster man hey I hey, well next time I come to Florida which will be next year I'm bringing my son Diesel my son name is Diesel he's gonna be six years old tomorrow man little Diesel is gonna come there and he's gonna train with you man but I want I want him to see you do do twenty four rounds. I don't think he gonna do. I don't think he do twenty four. Maybe he can do. Maybe he can do a good ten. But yo, man, I just want him to meet you because, um, you know, he's so inspired about you know you know by a young man like yourself, you know, and and other kids that 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 I'm in, interviewing, man. So I just want to let you know that just you know just what you're doing, Trey. You're a representative to those young, uh, those little guys and you know little girls that's out there, man. That that wanted to be doing what you're doing. So always remember, young brother. That you always got people watching, watching you, man, and always be a good representative when it comes to you know representing our peoples. All right. Yes, sir. Hey, hey. So, hey, Trey. Let me ask you this, man. I, I'm not. You're not off the hook yet, but I'm asking you the alias question that Coach Stokes always asks everybody and your um your your peers, man, in boxing uh, that I've asked in the past, man. Uh, they killed this. They, 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 they really blown me away with you know when it came to the answer. So I want to ask you the same questions, and I want you to think about it. And this is gonna let me know your boxing IQ, which I think you know, being that your dad, you know, uh, is an intelligent brother. I'm pretty sure you know you have your stuff together as well. 
But this is what I'm going to ask you. Who is your favorite boxer? And, and, I, and I need three when it comes to these three different um, topics. Who is your favorite boxer when it comes to offense, defense, and ring intelligence? So for, so for the first one, Trey, who is your first... Um, who's your favorite boxer when it comes to offense, offensive wise? Um, when it comes to offense, it's Mike Tyson. Because Mike Tyson, he's very powerful. He's very quick. And a lot of things people doesn't, don't recognize is that Mike Tyson, he can land his punches at will when he wants to because he has defense. So Mm. that's, that's one of the biggest ones when it comes to offense. Wow. Mike Tyson. You, You hear that, right? Mike Tyson, that that was great. Mike Tyson, I think it was a good answer. <laughs> oh yeah, without a doubt, without, without a doubt. Absolutely. What about <laughs> D, a, a Trey? What about defense? Who's your favorite um, defensive fighter? My favorite defensive fighter that has to be Floyd Mayweather. Wow. Because Floyd Mayweather, his his defense, he can get he can hit somebody and not get hit. Um. And with his defense, he can does he does a lot of things with defense. Like, well, as in feeding his opponents, um, maintaining his defense with his with his jab. Mm-hmm. And the thing about Floyd, Floyd uses his defense as a mechanism to put his opponents in vulnerable positions to land more to land more powerful punches. So it has to be Floyd that doesn't have the best defense, in my opinion. So what you're telling me is that Floyd uses his defense. Definitely like to to orchestrate or to set his opponent up for the ne- for the next punch or whatever he is that he wants to go ahead and deliver. Yes, sir. Oh man, you a heavy cat, man. For real, you a heavy cat. Now you only fourteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh man, young brother, man, keep doing what you're doing, man. I'm telling you, keep doing what you're doing. The world is gonna be yours. Trust me. And 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 okay, so we got Mike Tyson as your favorite offensive fighter. Floyd Mayweather is your favorite defensive fighter. And when it comes to ring ring uh intelligence within the ring, who's your favorite fighter? Um Muhammad Ali. Wow. Wow. Um with Muhammad, everything is good with Muhammad Ali. He's he's smart. His his offense is good, his defense is good. Um and with Muhammad Ali, he gets inside his opponent's head, and that's the one of his big variations of of his ring intelligence because he can get inside his opponent's head and um, beat them easily. Wow, wow, outstanding, man! Trey, look, what, what, young brother, what, what, what are your goals in the sport of boxing? Um, do you see yourself wanting to go to the Olympics, becoming a professional? Or you know whatever it might be, but what 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 do you what are your expectations? What do you see yourself doing in, in the sport of boxing? I see myself going to the Olympics, as this, as you said, and also going pro. Um, my goal is going to the Olympics to take gold, and in the pros, my Olympics is to also go and be like Floyd Mayweather, but as but as to be his record fifty and forty nine and and be fifty and zero. <laughs> Hey, that's a great. Hey, that's a great. Oh, brother. Hey, I love them, man. I love them because they they speak so honest, man. They speak so honest, oh, and, yeah. and they Absolutely. believe that. You know, that's what we need as adults, man. You, you can't stop. You can never stop um, dreaming, man. Don't ever, don't ever stop being a dreamer, man. Be a master dreamer. Be the ultimate dreamer, man. Set your standards high. Trey, let me um, let me ask you this, man. For those young men and women that's out there. That uh that 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 want to get to your level one day, you know that's watching you, you know come across your your Instagram um videos or may you know go to you know some fights in Florida or you know may see you, you know what is your um advice for those young fighters training to be the best in the sport of boxing? What 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 would your advice be to them, Trey? Um, my advice will be is to put more hard work in. Not just at the gym for people training to get that stamina, but to look at different bosses such as Floyd, Tyson, or Ali, um, to look at different aspects of boxing as as of the um, of the intelligence and 
also to see different workouts to get to get get better at things and to basically just go on YouTube and do anything else outside of the gym to get better. Outstanding, man. Outstanding. Trey, thank you for, uh, you know, uh, clarifying those things, man. I mean, that that just made me aware and everybody else aware that, that uh, man, you coming, man. You coming. So, uh, young man that's out there to train to step your game up because this young man right here is not playing around. He's not playing around. I definitely would be uh, stepping my game up if I heard somebody was putting in 24 rounds on a heavy bag, without a doubt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. We don't play around here. Yeah, that's, right. Get that's right. Hey, Coach, uh, now, yes, I wanna, now I want to kind of play devil's advocate, and I want to ask you these questions, kind of the same ones I asked him. But when it comes to um, boxes you were training or, you know, specifically, you know, your son, what three boxes that you – uh, we use when uh, teaching him, you know, about offense, defense, and ring IQ. Who, 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 who are uh, those fighters that you would uh, want, you know, Trey to go ahead and emulate? Um, there's a few of them. Um, I think um, one of my favorites to have him watch is uh, Pernell Whitaker. Mm. And, yes. Oh my God, this this guy, his defense, his, his offense. I mean, he's he's the full package. Yeah. And uh, I honestly think he's underrated. In, in the boxing game, when you're talking, when you're having that discussion about some of the greatest, um, I think Pernell Whitaker actually belongs, you know, at least in the top ten, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, if not five. So um, I have him to watch and emulate Pernell Whitaker. He fights a lot like him, actually, um, but primarily with um, the whole hit, not get hit aspect um, of the game. And um, when it comes to to power, offense, obviously, I have to go with Tyson on that. Um, I always stress the trade that, you know, in amateur boxing, a lot of it is just, you know, racking up points, touching the other bosses, touching the other bosses, touching the other bosses, and so on and so forth or whatever. But I like him to add power to his punches. I think that's the difference maker. Right. And um, I think Tyson showed us that or whatever. So, like he told you, one of his favorite workouts to do is to lift weights, you know, and to get stronger, you know. And um, so uh, we emulate uh, Tyson a lot. You know, when it comes to the um, offensive part, just because of the his ability to be able to use that power um, mm-hmm. and to make it a really short fight, which would be great for both of us <laughs> when right. that happens. Um, overall, um, ring intelligence, IQ, uh, there's nobody better out there than um, Ali and Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I grew up watching both, and I think Ali is the greatest. He'll always be the greatest of me. Um, but... Uh, for some odd reason, this kid that's sitting next to you right now tends to watch Florida a lot, you know, a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know, than I see. And, um, and so we've seen a lot of things that Florida, I think it's in terms of ring intelligence, um, the way Florida, you know, has the ability to be able to use timing and, and speed and the defense, especially. Um, I think he kind of took it to another level, um, um, in terms of his, his ability to use the defense along with offense and counter punching. Um, you know, which really equates to ring intelligence. So um, Ali and and I have to go with two on that. The ring intelligence, both Floyd and Ali on that. Good to go. Hey, all great um examples. You know, and I agree with it every every last one of them. You know, I mean they they all could be used as role models with all the other great fighters that are out there. Coach, I I have I have I have you know uh, kids coming up to me. I even have dads coming up to me and asking me, you know you know, what I need to do to be successful. But, um, you know, each coach has, you know, some key points, but I just want you to take, you know, uh, brush up or just tell me, you know, in your opinion, what are some key points in your mind to being a, a, a successful coach? To be a successful coach is to always think safety first. When you think safety, you're thinking defense. Teach your boxes defense. Mm. You know, um, a lot of the times with, in, in amateur sports, in amateur boxing, um, per se, um, I, you know, I see a lot of boxers out there who are really great offensively and getting off, but they take a lot of punishment at the same time. You know, and what, what, we, what we're seeing happen now with uh, the football athletes, you know, professional players with these concussions and everything else, I think that defense has probably has to be the most important um, aspect of everyone's boxing arsenal at this point. And I know I stress it to my son. Um, so I would say safety, but safety comes 
Um, another thing is, is dedication. Um, dedication, hard work. Um, you're not going to be able to be great at this unless you dedicate yourself to unless you train hard. And, you know, a lot of times when you're training a group, I know you can relate to this because I know you have gyms. You've been in boxing a long time. You'll have uh, 50 kids to come and sign up. And half of them are running around playing and not mm-hmm. taking it seriously. Right. By the time, you know, three or four months from then, you're, you're probably down to five boxes are really serious about doing it. That's right. what has to happen. You have to be able to, you know, uh, teach them to be serious about it and not to fall into the, you know, the peer pressure of, of playing around and not taking things seriously. I see that so bad. They have to be dedicated. They have to work hard or it's going to show up on competition day. That's right. And I think the most important thing is, you know, I always like to say is that you have to be God fearing in the sport. Mm. You know, a lot of time, a lot of things that happen. I, I see a lot of natural abilities that trade things that I didn't, I couldn't teach him. That maybe he was born with. I don't know, but um, I, I see a gift there with him. You know, and um, I know I didn't give it to him, so it had to come from somewhere. And at the same time, I know that when he gets in that ring, he he up to this point he's, he's not been hurt. So uh, we give a lot of praise to God, and we keep God involved in everything that we do every day. You know, we begin every day with a prayer, we end every day with a prayer. So, you know, I would say safety, um, dedication, and God. Those are my principles. Mm. But and 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 I loved I loved the ending part because you know, without the last part, which was God, wouldn't nothing else be existing. So I I, I appreciate that. You know, uh that was something I definitely need to hear and everybody else need to hear as well. Um mm-hmm. Man, that was yeah, that was really, really good. <laughs> Definitely, without a doubt. Coach. Oh, yeah. You know, last part before we wrap this up. Um what or how do you want your father and son team to be remembered in the sport of boxing? I want us to be remembered as being humble. Um I want us to be remembered as being great. And I want us to be remembered as being the most dedicated team to ever do it. Mm. And that's it in a nutshell, Coach. Good to go, man. Good to go. I mean, I, I mean, it was great. I mean, great, great interview, great answers. Um, your son, I can tell, you know, he comes from great, great upbringing, man. You're doing a great job, brother. You know, and like I said before, the reason why I'm doing this podcast and I will continue to preach this is that I feel that there are a lot of great men out there, you know, and a lot of times, you know, we don't, we don't, you know, women get all the kudos and nothing wrong with that, but you have fathers that's out there that are doing their job. We are doing our job. You know, we're taking out, taking care of our own. Um, a woman yeah. can raise a, a woman can raise a child. and has been doing it and is going to keep doing it, but she cannot teach her son how to become a man. And the only person that can do that is us. Absolutely. You know. So yeah. with with that being said, man, I just want to tell you, man, you are a positive role model for him and other 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 young men that you that 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 you continue to mentor because you are. A, 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 a strong black man who's educated, you know, that overcame the odds, that served his country and taking care of your son and, 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 and it's being, um, it's being transferred to him because everything that he's doing, he's seeing that you're doing. So, you know, he's coming, he's coming strong. So I just want to tell you, man, that, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing, my brother. Keep Thank doing, you, brother. keep doing what you're doing, man. Cause we need, we need more people out, out here. That's in the trenches like yourself. Um, I'm definitely going to, uh, you know, we definitely going to link up. We definitely going to do some things together. Um, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, all I can say is that, you know, uh, we, we, we got more family now, man, because, you know, you, you partners with my man, Coach Milk. So, I mean, hey, you, you know, oh, we yeah. all going to be tight. <laughs> we all going to be tight. But, uh, oh, yeah. you know, just before we end, um, is there anything that anything else you'd like to say, um, uh, Young Trey? To the people before we uh, conclude? Um, no, sir. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, um, 
uh, coach, so coach, coach, coach. You know he was nervous doing his interview, coach. What? I couldn't even tell, man, brother. I couldn't even tell. I could not even tell. He he, he handled it like a soldier. He said handled like a man. His 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 uh his voice was straight. His voice was deep. I ain't hear no trembling or no stuttering, no stammering. I mean, he did. You did good. Hey, uh, coach. Uh, for people yes, that's sir. out there, because you know we live in the social media world. For those people that want to go ahead and reach out. Um and and say something to you or 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 find out who you are whatever the case may be, um or just want to talk to you, how can they uh follow you or or get in contact with you on your social media? Uh, they can reach me at uh, Weaver underscore Law, and that's on Instagram. I'm on um, Facebook as Will Weaver Junior, and um I'll go ahead and throw my 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 website. You can always reach me there at www weaverinjurylaw.com okay you guys heard that um but i wish i would have i wish i would have known you uh, i don't know if you take out of state cases but last year man i got some cars there so i, I sure could have used you oh yeah absolutely <laughs> i can i handle i can handle any personal injury case um pre-suit Okay. I just can't litigate in other states, but I'm I'm a, I'm licensed in the state of Florida. I will be licensed in the state of Georgia next year, Good and I'm gonna keep moving from there, brother. Good to go, man. I was standing, I was standing. Well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Coach Stokes from the Ring to the Concrete through Stokes House Boxing Academy Online. Um, be sure to check this out um, and go check this dynamic duo out, man. The Weavers, um, they are something special. So I just want to tell you, thank you. Uh, for tuning in, and I'll be seeing everybody, talking to everybody soon. Hey, Coach Weaver, a hey, uh, uh, little Trey man, I just want to say thank you, and I'll be talking to you guys soon, all right? All right, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Bye. All right. This is history in the making. Raw sports box, repping big star. We got Coach Stokes, Sammy the Old Mayhem, Headbangers Box, Starside Damon, Abdullah Hurricane, Know What a Bullet, Amir Boubang, Remember My Mouth Entertainment, and we can't forget Cousin Larry Tate, connecting them dots. Raw sports box.